I'm on the phone, Brandon. All right, he's on the phone. And it's six o'clock. All right, well, let's get this. Go ahead and get this started. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, fellow council paper, for showing up this evening. We'll go ahead and call to order the city of Kennedy, Texas special city council meeting scheduled for today, August 25th, 2020, at 6 p.m. Amanda, we do have a quorum present from what I understand. Can you please call roll? Councilor Briones? Present. Councilor Wynn? Here. Councilor Stein? Here. Councilor Cano? Here. Councilor Meyer? Here. All present. Okay. Leslie, can you please say the prayer tonight? Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the grace that you've shown for this for Texas and for our community. We ask that you would be with us today and allow us to take care of the business of running our city and doing the things that we need to do to continue moving forward. We ask your wisdom and guidance in these matters. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amanda. Were there any public comments that were put in tonight? Yes, I do have one. Okay. Okay. It reads, the mayor pro tem and members of the city council. My name is Joe Baker and I am a resident of Kennedy. Please consider making an effort to find a way to safely return to hosting face-to-face -face city council meetings. I believe there is a way to safely hold these meetings in the city auditorium, which has ample space for social distancing. While I appreciate the city's efforts to place the safety of all residents above all else, I think there is a price being paid for these telephonic meetings, and part of the price is what appears to be the suppression of public participation. Also, the communication is not clear and is critically important that, and it is critically important that this communication be as clear as possible for all involved. As we approach the budget cycle, it is especially important for the public to be heard and whatever the city can do to allow for this would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for taking the time to listen to the comments and thank you all for showing such patience and good teamwork during the most recent meetings. And that is all, sir. Amanda. Hello? Okay. Item number four. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Brandon. Yes. Brenda. I'm not. I'm not feeling well. I'm gonna try to hang on as long as I can. But if I have to hang up, I'll no. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Brenda. Thank you very much. Move, moving on to item number four. Consideration and possible action in regard to resolution 20-21, a resolution of the city of Kennedy, Texas, establishing the boundaries of the historic downtown commercial district of the city for purposes of applying the financial assistance from the Texas Department of Agriculture's Texas Capital Fund Downtown Revitalization Program. I'll make Discussion. a motion. I'll make a motion. We consider agenda item number four. Motion by Justin. I'll second that motion. Second by Leslie. Discussion. Do have a presentation for this? Cindy Metro is on. Cindy. Yeah. I'm on the line. Yeah. If you have any questions, this just establishes okay. the boundaries. Is it okay for me to speak? I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead, Senator. Go ahead, yes. go ahead and speak. Okay. This just establishes the boundaries of the, the host historic district for um we're looking to do the, the sidewalks. And so you have to have a historic district and then that project area must be within the boundaries of that historic district. That's what this is. Are there any questions for me? No, man. And this is so, part. Th this is part of the grant process, correct? Yes, sir. So this is just a formality. 
Yes, and and it can be changed uh, by council anytime. Well, if the council doesn't have any other questions to keep this uh, grant process moving, I'll make a motion that we approve agenda item number four. A motion by I'll Justin. second that. Second by Leslie. And I'll any second other that. Second by Leslie. Any other discussion? Yes, council, city manager. Go ahead. Uh, I would just like to advise the city council uh, that since the mayor did not show up for this meeting, um, the city council in their motions on these resolutions and that will need to authorize the mayor pro tem to sign these documents. Okay, I'll Please. update my motion to include that we have uh, Brandon Briones, the mayor pro tem, Tim, uh, execute this resolution and any other associated documents. Got a motion by Justin. And, I'll, and I'll still second that. Still second by Leslie. Any other discussion? If there's no other discussion, Amanda, please call roll. Council Brianna? Yes. Council Wynn? Yes. Council Fines? Yes. Council Cano? Yes. Council Meyer? Yes. All in favor. Motion passes. Item number five, consideration of possible action in regard to resolution 20-22, a resolution of the city of Kennedy, Texas, finding the conditions exist within the designated historic downtown commercial district of the city, which are detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community and therefore are declared to constitute a slum blighted area. Make a motion I'll that make we consider <laughs> item five for, uh, on the agenda. I'll motion second. by, second by Justin, discussion. Do you have a presentation for item number five? Yes, Ms. Metro, would you like to have a floor? Yes. Sure. Um, this is part of the national objective. So part of that is the elimination of slum and blight in that downtown area because that's what they're trying to do is create economic development opportunities. So we have to declare part of uh, we have to declare that area as that there are conditions in the area that would qualify as slum blight, like on Second Street, those broken, cracked sidewalks, things like that that need to be repaired. So those are definitely blighted. And again, so it sounds this like is one just a formality. Mm -hmm. y yes, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. It's part of the grant. Yes, sir. So then if I'll make a motion on this again. Uh, to approve agenda item number five and have the mayor pro tem, Brandon Briones, execute the resolution in any other associated document. I'll second that. Justin. Cindy, second. I'll second that. Okay, second by Cindy. You broke our one. Sorry, Cindy. Any other discussion? No other discussion. Amanda, please call roll. Council Briones? Yes. Yeah. Councilor Wynn? Councilor Wynn? Yes. yes. Councilor Fine? Yes. Councilor Cano? Yes. Councilor Meyer? Yes, ma'am. All in favor. Motion passed. Item number six. Consideration and possible action in regard to resolution 20-23. The resolution of the city of Kennedy, Texas authorizing the submission of a Texas Community Development Block Grant Program application to the Texas Department of Agriculture for the Downtown Revitalization Program Fund and authorizing the mayor 
and or city manager to act as the city's executive officer and authorized representative in all matters pertaining to the city's participation in the Texas Community Block Development Block Grant Program. What's for discussion? Six on the agenda. Yeah, the motion by Justin. Thank you, by Justin. Discussion. You have a presentation for item number six. Yes. Um, this is just the uh, the resolution authorizing you to submit this application for up to uh, five hundred thousand dollars, and then you do have a match of seventy five thousand dollars. And so, Cindy, just for the citizens that are listening, um, I know we've sure. talked about this in previous council meetings, but would you mind just giving a little bit more disclosure on what the city of Kennedy is looking at doing so they understand what that 500000 is going for and then that what that match is going to represent for Kennedy? Just just a brief summary. It, sure. Um, it, that, that is going for sidewalks, um, and right now we're looking at 2nd Street, um, there's a couple of options from Escondido to Live Oak on both sides to repair that. Or we could do, uh, there's another option still on 2nd Street. So that is the main goal with that. And possible lighting. We might be able to, to work some lighting into the budget as well. So w that's what we're looking at. So the, the 75000 is part of the, the city's match, but for all of that, you get construction, you get engineering, and you get the grant administration. So that all works together, um, and it's, it's, a good, it's a, a good bang for your buck type of thing. <laughs> yes, ma'am, and this will also help us get into ADA compliance, correct? Yes, yes, it will. Perfect. The only other question that I have looking at this agenda item is we need to um, assign a chief executive officer, either the city manager or the mayor. Um, how does the council feel appointing Mr. Lynn as the chief executive officer for this grant? If, if we do that, if we do that, and uh, after the election, we can and we can can we change that, or does that stay after we start? It, okay, so it does stay. Um, and that's why we use the term city manager and mayor, just in case things change. Um, usually, the the mayor is always an appropriate signer of contracts. Um, and it just depends from city to city on who you're comfortable with. Uh, you can certainly make a motion to just have the mayor and then maybe Mayor Pro Tem sign it if you if that's more comfortable for you all. It just depends on what you want to do. You would have to change because I, I did send it in a word format so that that can be changed, but that is that is council's decision. <laughs> I have a question. Can you have both of them on there, or you have to pick one or the other? Uh, I, so I would put both on there. That's why we do both, just in case somebody's out for some reason and something has to get signed right away. That way we always have a backup plan. Okay, so we don't have to have one or the other. We can have both. That's right. It says and or. Yes, correct. One or the so other. Both is both is what we'd like to have. That's what I think we should have. That way, if the mayor is not available, the city manager can sign it, and it keeps on moving. I agree. Exactly. I, I, I agree. I, I thought we had to pick. I, I didn't see that. I misread the or. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm fine. I, I just thought we had to pick one. Yeah, that's, yeah, we tried to put both on there just to make sure. If, if the mayor's out or if Mr. Lynn's out, that somebody's there that can sign. Okay. And in that case, I'm going to make a motion that we take action in regard to resolution 20-23, a resolution for the, city, for the city of Kennedy and Texas authorizing the submission of the 
Texas Community Development Block Grant Program application to the Texas Department of Agriculture for the Downtown Revitalization Program Fund and authorizing the mayor and or the city manager to act as the city executive officer and authorized representative in all matters pertaining to the city participating in the Texas Community Developmental Law Grant Program. Now, second. Right, Brenda. Any other discussion? If there's no other discussion, Amanda, please call roll. Council Briones? Yes. Council Wynn? Yes. Council Sines? Yes. Council Cono? Yes. Council Meyer? Yes. Yes, ma'am. All in favor. Motion passed. Moving item number seven. Consideration of possible action in regard to resolution 20-24. A resolution of the city of Kennedy, Texas, authorizing the submission of a Texas Community Development Black Grant Program application to the Texas Department of Agriculture for the fire, ambulance, and service truck fast fund and authorizing the mayor and or city manager to act as a city executive officer and an authorized representative in all matters pertaining to the city's participation in the Texas Community Development Block Grant Program. Discussion? I'll make a We consider agenda item number seven. And then Justin? I'll second it. Discussion? Presentation, Cindy? Um, this is this is a really good grant. So you put up to half a million dollars and your match is five thousand dollars. So it's worth applying for. Uh, it's worth trying to get it. Um, the only the the only negative is that um, they're gonna look at the census block data of the fire department. So you might run into you might not be um, you might not be awarded just because of that reason, um, because you have to be low to moderate income in those areas. So that might be a little bit of a hitch for us, but it's worth trying for. It doesn't cost you anything to try for it, so I think we should go ahead and try for it, even if we don't get it. What? You know when? Um, I will. I can't. Okay. I, I agree, Cindy, and I, I think what Mr. Lynn and I were talking about is um, I think his idea, which I think is a great idea, is for a fire ladder truck, correct? Yes, sir. It's a good a deal. Yes, ma'am. Um, how long will you know before um, if we got the grant or not? How soon do they let y'all know? Um, usually we find out in December, it might be a little later this year due to COVID, but last year on both of these grants, the FAST Fund and Downtown Revitalization, we found out in December and contract start dates were in February. Well, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Cindy, this is, I got a question. Where... Uh, off of this, where do you see other than that census holding Kennedy back from getting this truck grant? Um, the, there is a scoring sheet to it as well, and I'm pulling that up as we speak. Um, just a second. Okay. So you have, all right, so uh, previous funding is 20 points and you have 15 points, so that's good. Uh, they look at the poverty rate. You have a poverty rate of 16.34%, and that just depends on who all applies. And then they have the per capita income, and your per capita income is 23,886. So it's just gonna depend on who else applies at the same time. Okay. So it sounds like we have a decent application, um, but we don't have 
probably the best application that's going in the pod. That's that's I would say that's true. So that, that would be true. Uh, yeah, because uh, because of the census data. So they're going to look at that. They're going to look at that low income and uh, counselor uh, Myers. We talked about that and with uh, some other things. So yeah, that that could be a little bit of a snafu, but. Like I said, it's worth applying for. You don't know if you don't throw your hat in the ring. So that's true, Brett. And, it, and it's only a five thousand dollar match. So I mean, for potentially five hundred thousand dollars in grant monies to get something for the fire department that honestly um, really do need. Um, I. With that being said, if I'll make the motion that we approve the agenda item as presented, um, and and I'll don't second forget to add, that. Don't forget to add, add, don't forget to add well, that, um, that Brandon has to sign it. On this one, does, does Brandon, is this one of the and ors? I'm trying to look at my phone as I'm. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's an and or. It's, 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 it's an and yeah. You're right. Sorry, I missed it. No, no, Brandon. I, no problem. What's up, bro? I got a motion by Justin, second by Leslie. Any other discussion? Any other discussion? Amanda, please call roll. Councilor Briones? Yes. Councilor Wynn? Councilor Wynn? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Councilor Sines? Yes. Councilor Cano? Yes. Councilor Meyer? Yes. All in favor. Motion pass. Item number eight, consideration and possible action in regard to the selection of a grant administrator for administration of the Texas General Land Office Community Block Development Blocks Grant Disaster Recovery Mitigation Program and authorize the city manager to enter into a professional services agreement for grant administration with the selected firm. Discussion? <laughs> I make a motion to consider item eight on the agenda. Motion by Leslie. I'll second, I'll second. it. Okay, second by Justin. Discussion? Presentation? Yes, uh, this is for the uh, the general land office uh, disaster recovery mitigation grant that the uh, county uh, at one time had had the uh, conference about that I attended um, that we talked about. Uh, this is an awesome thing for the city of Kennedy. Uh, we've reached out to the county, and uh, the county is, uh, from my understanding, eager to partner with Kennedy in some of this. So. Uh, that would give us up to six projects, three we could do by ourselves, three we could do in conjunction with the uh, county. Uh, so what we got to do is we got to select our, our grant administrator again uh, for this. And uh, we had two uh, people respond. Uh, we had a uh, Langford and Associates respond, and uh, uh, they were rated and scored, and uh, they received a score of 91.25. And uh, then we had CSRS. Uh, respond and uh, they met all the criteria and uh, so they received a score of 100 um, on that so uh, so that's what we're doing right now we're going to say who we want to be our grant administrator for this particular uh, GLO grant has CSRS ever done work in the city of for the city of Kennedy Um, I have not seen anything with their names on it. No, sir. Of course, I'm on some things. I'm I'm kind of a creature of habit. I'd like to I'd like to stay with the person I know. Yeah, and I agree with that. I'm I'm pretty partial to Langford only because I've worked with Langford for almost three years now with multiple grants. 
um, even though on the score sheet they might not have been the highest in scoring, I know their quality of work, and I know to the extent that they will do to make sure that they meet all the needs of us. So with, I'm more partial to Langford, but, but that's just from my past experience with the city of Kennedy and with um, the county. Thank you for that sharing, Justin. Um, I don't know, you know, I I haven't dealt with either one, so I really, any input that you guys have to help us make a good decision, I'd really like to hear it because this is a big deal and this is something that can be pretty big for the community and, and make a big difference in a lot of areas. So... The grant, the person that's in charge is going to have play a big role in that. So, if you're comfortable with the folks that you say, Justin, because like I say, you you work with them a whole lot more than I ever have. So, if you're comfortable with them, I'm comfortable with them. Well, it, it, it's it's not just that, <laughs> Leslie. You no, know, I've worked with grants with them as little as seventy thousand dollars. And we're working on this same exact grant that we're talking about right now with the county. There are grant administrators. Our application is going to be roughly $67 million in projects. So with that being said, it doesn't matter the size of the grant. They have the administration to make sure we meet all the deadlines. We're crossing off, uh, we're crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's. I, I just personally know with Linkford um, and I probably, I think where I'm at about eight grants in with them since I've been with the county, but they've been with the county longer than I've been with the county. Um, I give them a 10 out of 10, to be quite honest. All right. That sounds good to me. Yeah, Cindy, is Cindy still on? Yeah, Cindy's yes, I am. What yes, kind of yes. project would, would something... Uh, come out of this grant? I mean, what, what kind of projects are we talking about? Uh, there's all kinds of projects that can come out of this. I mean, we, you could do a sewer plant um, as much as, you know, uh, like Justin talked about, uh, into the, the tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, you could do drainage projects. You could do homes. There's all types of things that you can do with this. Um, okay. This has okay. An issue. Awesome. Okay. Good. So what we're doing right now with the county, so with that, I actually have a meeting tomorrow, but with that application, some projects uh -huh. will include, and so they're, they're like drainage improvement projects. So the county's main focus right now is the watershed. And so bridgeways, drainage, like culverts and everything like that. Um, I know one of the projects within Kennedy that we're focusing on off of a map mm -hmm. that was provided by the San Antonio River Authority and then the 100-year mm -hmm. floodplain. What we're doing is back over there on Sunnyside Drive, Blue Bonnet, coming in, and then also like coming into Escondido Creek, we're, we're mm -hmm. trying to improve the drainage. So I'm sure most of y'all know when it rains hard, it floods back right. in those areas. And so that's a part of the county's application um, and, and when talking with Langford, we, and, and talking with the county and the cities, it, we feel like it might be stronger if each entity applies separately, but the county's application is already going to include projects in all four municipalities, as well as outside in those unincorporated areas. Um, that, that's okay. what the county's focusing on, but I know Cindy could probably break it down more on other things that the city of Kennedy could do. Uh, besides those drainage improvement projects. That's fine. I just didn't know if it was something specific that we had to do, but it sounds like it's not. So that's, that's a good thing. And, and one thing, just to note it out for any citizen listening to this, it's a 1% match. So that's tiny, tiny, tiny. And luckily, um, I believe as, as a resident of the city of Kennedy and as a city council member, 1% for that kind of funding, if, if we can figure out a way to make it work, because that that's a lot of yeah. the application is fun. Yeah, it sounds pretty minimal for what you actually will get. Yeah. 
Sounds good to me. All righty, then I'm going to make a motion on item eight to take action in regard to selecting the grant administrator uh, for the Texas General Land Office, GLO, Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Mediation uh, Program and authorize city manager to enter into a professional service agreement for grant administration with selected firm. And we, if we're going to select a firm, I would select, uh, make a motion that we use Langford for the firm. And I'll second, I'll second. that. Okay. Motion by Lindsay, second by Cindy. Any other discussion? If there's no other discussion, Amanda, please call roll. Councilor Briones? Yes. Councilor Wynn? Yes. Councilor Sines? Yes. Councilor Cano? Yes. Councilor Meyer? Yes. All in favor. Motion pass. Item number nine, consideration of possible action in regard to the selection of an engineer for the Texas General Land Office GLOBE Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Mitigation CDBG MIT Program. Discussion? Make a motion to consider item nine on the agenda. I'll second. <laughs> second by Justin. Discussion? <laughs> Presentation? Um, okay, so now uh, the program requires us, of course, to uh, choose an engineering firm uh, that we desire to actually spearhead all the engineering on this. Uh, we had uh, three respondents. Uh, let me see if I can read these names. Uh, Rakowitz, Lynn Engineering, and looks like... The, they sell and associates. Um, anyway, uh, we reviewed them and they sell and land scored the highest. They actually had uh, experience doing these type of, uh, this type of work. Um, and uh, Rakowitz came in pretty close. Uh, I personally have never worked with any one of these. Uh, so these three firms are all completely new to me. Um, so I don't know if Ms. Metro has ever worked with any one of the three of them, uh, if she has a preference, or if uh, Councilor Meyer in the county has ever worked with any of them. So with the county, we worked with Rakowitz and you said that's the last one that you said. Um, Thank you. Rakowitz, Rakowitz is great for smaller projects. Um, just keep that in mind. If, if it's a, it, I would, they're great with smaller projects. What Juset offers and with the uh, CDBG mid grant that the county is doing, we went with Juset because the, with the amount of experience in engineers, um, we would have never been able to personally come up with $67 million of projects. Um, Juset actually did all the back end work for us and then set it down. And then we, we looked at all their proposals what they wanted to do within the county, within the cities, and um, actually, like I said, we have a meeting tomorrow with Doucet and Langford, where we're going to narrow down, final up our application to get it ready for submission. Um, I that second uh, Lynn, I think you said Lynn Engineers. Um, I've never worked with them. I don't know, Cindy. Uh, you might have worked with them in the past. I don't know if you can uh, give any references on them or any of the other engineers. Um, uh, Rakowitz, yes, we've worked with them before, and yes, the smaller projects, and the other one, Lynn, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not familiar with them. So, they're also one, not nice. I'm sorry? They're also known as Mercer, Mercer Engineers. Mercer. Okay. 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 I have heard of Mercer before, but I have not worked with them personally. Mercer's done work for the city of Kennedy in the past. Uh, correct, Amanda? Yes. Right. They've done a lot of the projects 
in Kennedy. Uh, Rackwitz, I've heard of them. They do their work is is good as well. Uh, between the two, it's it's going to be a pretty tough decision. I mean, they their work is great. It's whoever the council wants to to pick is going to our select is going to take it. But Cindy, you said you work with Rackwitz, but never worked with Mercer. Um, Rackowitz, I, 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 I know them. I have not worked with them personally. Um, but I know they have worked on, like Langford has worked on projects with them and Langford has worked with Doucette and Mercer. So, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So my question is the two that scored the, that scored the best. One of them is the one that we're one of them is one that we're, that we're aware of, and the other one is the one is one that we're not aware of at all. Um, so the Mercer one is that the one that does small projects, or is that one that has the ability to do the big projects? So Rakowitz is a smaller firm. They're good engineers, okay. but they, they with my past history with them. And I think Cindy might have some history with them as well. They typically do smaller uh, infrastructure projects. They're still smart people. Uh, they don't have the team like the other two firms. So then Mercer would be the one was saying that's done work with the city of Kennedy before. And then Doucette is the other larger firm who's done work with the county. Um, I, my, my question to the council was when you... Um, when you start speaking up, we were thinking at the same time, is are we looking at doing large projects with the city of Kennedy or are we looking at doing smaller projects? Personally, I think we need to work toward the getting the best bang for our bucks. For so I'd say we should look at some of the larger projects. I, I would agree, Leslie. Cindy, yes, uh, yeah. This grant that we're speaking about right now, what's the max project that could be done with what we're talking about? In your end, well, what you that's a little bit wide open right now because that hasn't been narrowed down yet. When they give this money, they give it to the COGS and the counties and the state, and they haven't broken it down. But it's a ton of money. Um, Justin, it, it's what, like $2 billion for the entire... But so what I was told, what I was told, it was a minimum of five million dollars in projects, up to a hundred million. That was the last that I had heard when we were applying yeah. for the grant for the. So that that we the county okay. we tried to get as many projects as we possibly could find. So that's why our application sits at sixty seven point six million dollars right now. Now it might be narrowed down a little bit tomorrow, where it might not be at that max capacity. Um, of 67.6 um, but if Brandon long story short we're looking if, if we can find projects and we can and we can identify them get the engineering done and propose it in the application um, I don't I don't think we'll find a hundred million dollars in projects in Kennedy but maybe we could that would be awesome if we did um, that's why I, in my personal opinion I think we need to look at a larger firm. Um, because like, for example, with Doucette, they, like I said, they did all the back end work for us. You know, they went out and I, granted, I was the liaison between the County San Antonio River Authority, um, and Doucette, but I got them all the information they needed. And then basically I have a four, three by four map in my office labeling all the projects that they, the County is going to apply for where Doucette did everything. They looked at all the watershed. They looked at all the. The, the infrastructure on the county roads, the city roads, and everything else. And so I, w I would feel more comfortable going with a larger firm just because in, it's, it's a money-making business. They know the larger the project, the more money that they're going to make. Um, so they're more active to find and use, use their uh, software and systems and data and everything else to find those projects, identify them and help us out who, you know, don't have as much experience in identifying these projects. Do you think it would be uh, a, uh, a challenge for 
the firm that the county is using if we ask them to represent us also? I don't think so because Doucette currently is already aware of all the is well, Doucette is very familiar with Carnes County because of we've been working on this application for about a month and a half to two months now. So they're very familiar with the county um, and the and the the watersheds, the drainage, but even like I know if we like Cindy was saying if we want to look at the sewer plan or anything else, like their team is huge. They're all over Texas. Um, they have multiple engineers. Colin Slagle is actually the engineer that I work with almost a day to day basis. Anytime he has, I get him the information. We work together. Um, we have bi weekly meetings um, where we get on a conference call with Langford and Doucette. Um, I have a good working history with them. Uh, I have a good working history with Rockaway. Uh, Mercer, I don't, but I do know that they've done work in Kennedy. So it really is going to be a council's decision. I think Mr. Ling was saying that both Mercer and you said scored the highest. Um, and I think if we're looking at the we really need to look at those two. So it's really going to be the, the council's decision, which one out of the two to go for it. Justin, could you work with you said before? I think we should go with them since you have a really good history with them. I agree. I agree. I do too. Justin's worked with him. He's got the knowledge of him. And I mean, if Justin feels Justin feels that way. I think we should go with with that. He's got the experience working with these these people. So, what do you what do you think? What, what do you say, Justin? No, I mean I agree. But I, once again, I don't want to sound biased. I just I work a lot with these administrators and engineers, and I and like I said, even. With. I'm, they are good engineers. I just think if we're trying to do large projects and tackle a lot of things and get a really good, strong application, we should um, try to get maybe someone that has multiple engineers with the amount of knowledge. Um, and if, if y'all are comfortable with what you said, I'm comfortable saying that they have been great engineers to work with, just like Linkford. Linkford's been great grant administrators to work with as well. Oh. <clears throat> I'm so I'm good with that if somebody wants to make a motion um, go on all right I make a motion that we pick uh, do set for the engineering company uh, uh, to do our uh, grant project for number nine on our agenda I'll second that Second by Leslie. Discussion? There's no other discussion. Amanda, please call roll. Councilor Briona? Yes. Councilor Wynn? Yes. Councilor Sign? Yes. Councilor Connell? Yes. Councilor Meyer? Yes. On the stairs. Motion passed. Moving on to item number 10, consideration of possible action in regard to the acceptance of the City of Kennedy's 2019 annual financial report prepared by buyer and company CPAs. Discussion? I'm making a motion that we consider item number 10 on the agenda. I'll second that. This is Cindy. Anybody by Cindy? Anybody Cindy? Discussion. Okay, discussion. And now I I understand that Mr. Byer is on the phone. Yes. Yes. Can you, get, Mr. Byer, are you there? Yes, sir. Go yes, ahead. Sir. And uh, City Manager Lynn, you had ha you said there was a concern that you had on uh, uh, on the audit. Can you share that? Uh, yes. Um, the uh, the concern that I had with the audit, Mr. Byer and I had already spoken about today, and I know that he was going to address it in his presentation, uh, but since the, I've been asked, uh, we had to, um, uh, typically an auditor will do the audit, and then if there's any uh, adjustments that need to be made, they send it, you review it, 
Uh, they asked you to sign off on it. Um, and when Mr. Byer followed those procedures, the dollar amount that I was being asked to sign off on uh, was well outside of my comfortable level threshold. Um, we were asked to sign off on about $5 million worth of adjustments uh, to our books. Um, I did get Mr. Byer on the phone. He and I talked through it. I expressed my concerns with him about it. Uh, these adjustments, uh, essentially what they boil down to, and again, Mr. Byer, when he presents, he'll touch on this, but the short story is uh, we did projects uh, in, the, in the fiscal year with which we were audited for, and those projects were in funds, and they were uh, asset-type projects that carried deplete, uh, depreciation with them, and Mr. Byer needed to properly allocate those to the fund where it needed to be depreciated in, and the only way he could do that was more or less uh, just to pick it up out of that fund and drop it into another fund and us make an adjusting journal entry. So it was just a matter of reallocation uh, to the proper fund uh, so that we could gather the depreciation and the right fund on these uh, assets that we have. So uh, while it was an exorbitant amount, uh, there was nothing really significant as far as anything that raised a concern with the auditor um, as far as any misdeeds or anything that he and I discussed. So, um, and that was my okay. major concern. All right. Now, Mr. Byers, can you give us an a overall generalization of where we're at as a city and how our audit looks? I went through the audit and it says a lot, but it, I need it broken down in, in uh, layman terms and our citizens need it broken down in layman terms also. Okay. Uh, first, I want to say that, uh, Mr. Lynn, you are a very good listener. You can see exactly. You said exactly what I was just going to say regarding our discussion this afternoon. Um, as far as the financial condition of the city, the city is in excellent financial condition. Excellent. Okay. Fantastic. Did you want me to go on? Well, that you know that that's in a nutshell. That sounds good to me. If there's some other information that other council individuals that would like to have, oh, okay. um, you guys can ask whatever you want to ask. But that was kind of where I wanted to know, at the end of the day, have we done a good job managing our money, and are we moving in the right direction? And Extremely good. Through, yeah. The city, okay. in my view, as an outsider, the city is an excellent budgeter. The city... Um, passes good, strong budgets where they're, you know, basically um, um, balanced. And the city stays within, on expenditures, the city stays within their expenditure um, their expenditure amounts. They're, they're excellent, excellent budgeting. The city's excellent at budgeting. Great, great. Now there, uh, there was another concern. There's a there's a letter that has to be signed off by the mayor. Can we have that signed off by the mayor pro temp and still have everything in order? Yes, that's a that's a representation letter. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Lim. Yes, uh, the mayor pro temp can sign that. Yeah, that'd be it. Would be very valid. Yes. Okay. Mr. Byer, when you did this audit, did you, was there anything out of the ordinary that caught your eye that you feel that Kennedy should work on harder or strive, strive to read? Yes, yes. I, I think, and I'm not sure what the city's um, plans are with respect to, there is this, there's this lady, I guess, that the city uh, retain to help get the books ready to be audited. Um, my my um, suggestion is for the city to retain this lady. You know, just retain her. I'm just she, she can work one day a week or five days a month or whatever is is she or whomever you would get would be comfortable. 
Uh, I thought she she does very good. I think she does very good work. Um, but I would um, get her and keep her, and then a subset a subset of that. She would know. See, one of the problems with um, with Kennedy, as in a lot of cities, is keeping these uh, accounts reconciled. In other words, um, these due to and due from between funds, you know, keeping those reconciled and, and reconciling consolidated cash with the funds. Um, this overall uh, keeping the books very, very clean. And I think she came in and she did that. You know, there was nothing yeah. untoward um, that anybody was doing, um, you know, that would, um, you know, like theft or anything like that. It's just that the books were not kept in a clean manner. And this yeah. lady did that. Good. So that's what I would recommend is you retain her. She'll do all these things. She'll do all these things that auditors look for you know, in, in audit clients. All right. Amanda, Amanda, this is Cindy. Is she still coming in? Uh, yes, Judy is, um, she is, she just, she decided to come back to the city when we asked her to come back to help consult the books. And so she's with the city now. She comes in probably about once a week, like Mr. Byer said. Okay. okay. I, I just wanted to make sure that she was still with us. Yes, she is. Okay. And I might add, um, and that you know you 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 be getting all these grants, and that um, they will be looking at this. You know, they will be looking at things. Um, you have somebody in the city that can keep the books clean. It's a very very important important item with these these grant people. I'm talking like the, the state federal government. In the state government. Okay. <coughs> so, does anybody else have any questions? If not, I'm going to make a motion that we accept the uh, audit for the City of Kennedy 2019 financial report prepared by buyers and company, CPA. I got a motion by Leslie. I'll Leslie, do you want to add to um, allow the mayor pro tem to sign any documents? Yes, ma'am. And I'll, I'll add that I uh, have the mayor pro tem to sign any documents concerning this that needs to be signed. I'll still second it. Second by Justin. Discussion? If there's no other discussion, Amanda, please call roll. Councilor Briones? Yes. Councilor Wynn? Yes. Councilor Sign? Yes. Councilor Cono? Yes. Councilor Meyer? Yes. All in favor. Motion passed. Item 11. Make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Leslie. I'll Me second. Adjourn. I'll second. Thank you, by Justin. Everybody. <laughs> He's done. Have a good night. See y'all back on Thursday. You have a good one. Thank you, everybody. Great right. job. Thank you. Thank you.